does the uh, hamstring feel? Feels good to me. Just kind of ramping up. Uh, yeah. Right it, it's a ramp up here that we're doing. Just making sure, you know, everything's feeling right. And uh, just checking all the, the engines in the, or the, the lights in the, the car and make sure the engine's running well. And uh, you know, when we're finally there, just ready to go. Was it a little something that happened the, uh, the last day of mini camp that kind of lingered for you a little bit, but now you're fine or not done yet? Mm, I wouldn't say it lingered for too much. I think it was just a matter of being overly cautious and uh, we just not want to you know, play with fire. So just making sure that slowly bounce back so we don't have any setbacks you know, here right before the season or during the season. Maybe that's part of it, Miles, but how do you approach the long grind of training camp different now at this stage in your career than you did earlier? How do I approach it? Yeah. Well, we're not here from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. anymore, so that's nice. Uh, I'm also not at the hotel. I'm not young. Uh, I don't know. More of a leadership role. Taking that mentorship role while I'm when I'm, you know, with the guys, whether it's offense or defense, you know, just giving them the keys and tips that I see, you know, try to, to further their games and try to, you know, make the game slow down for them. And I want everyone to be able to, you know, take something from this camp, you know, get better each day, at least a 1% or 0.1% or whatever, whatever it is. I want those guys to, you know, keep on building, keep on stacking. That's what we're trying to do, just continue that culture of, uh, you know, getting better every day working harder. How much, you know, kind of being able to kind of stand behind the, the play and watch, how much does that give you a, a better perspective to when you're, you are talking to an Alex Wright or, or whomever you may be, you know, kind of mentoring, you know, kind of having that perspective to see what they're doing and that vantage point of, of, of what's going on? Uh, I mean, even when I'm, I'm practicing with the guys, I'm playing with the guys, um, I'm always watching, like, what they're doing. I'm trying to see if I can either help uh, offer some advice, give them, give them something that I've been seeing that make, it, make their move improve or maybe shorten their steps, quicken their time to the quarterback or to, to the ball carrier, or trying to take what they're, they're using and put it in my arsenal. Or maybe I like how they're, they're stepping, how they're using their hand, you know, whatever move they're doing. Maybe they, they learn something in the offseason. I'm, I'm always you know, locked in and seeing what, what guys are, are doing on the field. Uh, I mean, it's always exciting. You know. At any given day, you know, you, get, you can get uh, lit up by a quarterback in this league. You know, all these guys you know, are here for a reason. So, you know, most of those guys are, you know, by most uh, standards of measurement, you know, some of the best in the league. So, it's it is an, an exciting time. It, it will be you know, competitive, but you know, we we look forward to that challenge. You know, we we want them to, to give them their best because you know we, we know we're going to work hard to to give them ours. Miles, uh, coming off your uh, defensive player of the year, what is your process, I guess, this offseason as far as dissecting your game and, and finding areas that you can improve? We asked Kevin Stefanski earlier, you know, <laughs> he see he still sees things that, uh, you know, amaze him from you, and he said, absolutely. So just what did you uh, what did you do this offseason to kind of maybe find a, an area or two that you can still even get better at? Uh, I watch a lot of tape. Not only of myself, but of others, and you know, just watching how they deal with you know circumstances or situations that I get put in, whether it's double team, uh, chip, that's outside chip, wide receiver, tight end, you know, from the backfield, triple teams, whatever it is. Looking at how they they go through their process and, and beating those, and you know, trying to implement that into my game, however I can. And watching watching those guys, you know, definitely helps. No, take my game to the next level because we have so many talented guys in position. So, just trying to 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 learn from my, my own mistakes, watching it, you know, day in and day out, and making sure I don't I don't uh, you know, I minimize the mistakes that I that I make. Miles, uh, giving the opponent at the stage the first game of this year have any extra wins? It's Dallas. It's home. I don't plan on losing. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> like, there's so many of you guys that have been together so long now, so what's it like coming in here now, maybe, versus the earlier years? 
I mean, early years of my career, it was just so brand new. Everything just seemed like I was part of someone else's story. Like, it just didn't feel real. And uh, finally, you know, in the last like four or five years, I would say, it's, it's kind of settled down. And you know, even more recently, you know, feeling more comfortable in that leadership role, you know, t you know, taking that, that platform and, and use it to um, empower my teammates, you know, continue to encourage them and make them, be make them better, but also you know, give them the, the courage to, to speak up and, and make them become leaders when the time calls for it. You know, it's not just me. You know, we need guys who will be leaders and also followers when, when the time comes. That's all of us. So I look at it as you know, another opportunity to grow. Um, honestly, West Virginia is beautiful, so I enjoy coming out here. But it, it, uh, it's, it's fun. You know, a lot of guys wouldn't say that about, about training camp, but it, it's where you, you make your, your standards, where culture is built, and you, you want to make sure that you get the most out of times like this. Who are some of those guys that you watch and try to get your double and triple uh, so Max, Nick, uh, Micah, Trey, TJ. Um, so I miss anybody? Mm, that's about it. And, and is it possible, and if so, how, for your role to expand in year two of Jim's system? Our role is to make plays, so I don't think it can get bigger than that. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I felt like, you know, in the past, sometimes guys you know, who were closer to me in age or I wasn't that much older than, we kind of view it more as like competition. I was trying to, you know, maybe be conceited or, you know, looking down on them when you know, I just want to see, you know, my guys, you know, go out there and win. And now it feels like I'm getting the, the nickname Unk and OG and crap. It, it feels it feels more like the guys are like looking at them and say, yo, bro, just, you know, Give me something. You know, how can I improve here? You know, what are your, what's your thought process here? How are your steps? And you know, I, you know, give them my answer wholeheartedly. You know, this is what you're doing. This is what I see. This is how I feel like you can, you can uh, you know, improve and change your game. And you know, they, they've been really receptive. And I'm just you know, continuing to, to give out advice as I, as I uh, you know, get questions. And just try to, try to improve each day in my leadership role. And, and then you know, as they teach me things, I, I continue to uh, be a better follower as well. Always more. <laughs> so I don't want to say too much and then, then get jumped in the first game of the year. But um, I look forward to it. Look forward to the challenge. You no, know, whatever you throw at me, um, it gets me excited. You know, the odds that you know just get stacked against me or against us, and it's like, you know, how are you going to find another way to be unstoppable? How are you going to find another way to to change or disrupt the game? How are you going to? Uh, put yourself in position to win and put your teammates in position to win. How can you allow them to take over if you're going to take you know, two or three? Those are kind of you know, thought processes I have. If I'm, I'm going to win two, but it's going to take enough, it's going to take too much time for me to get there. You know, I'm just getting my hands up or maybe running a game so that my guy can get free because you know, they're, they're spending so much attention on me. You know, seeing how someone can make the play, not just me. You know, it's, a, it's a defense of Full of stars, so I wanted, wanted all these guys to get the, the opportunity to shine. Uh, we know Dalvin's going to miss some time. He had the procedure done today. Just how important has it been to have him on the interior with you guys, and how important is it that you guys have amassed this depth along the D line that you've had the last couple of years? You know, we have we have uh, gathered a lot of uh, really solid, really great players on the D line. So um, it's it's nice to have that that amount of depth in our of our, our position in our room, but like he'll he'll definitely be missed. You know, he's a leader out there. He's great at making calls. He's smart, and uh, you know, he's a hell of a teammate. You know, he's he's willing to uh, you know make things work, whether it's a, a pick game or calling games to get guys free. You know, if he doesn't like his his matchup, you know, he thinks you know 
whether it's a slide or the double teams coming his way. You know, he, he sees all that in, in the game is, you know, like I said, slowed down for him. So he's going to, you know, make those those proper calls, whether I'm on, on his side or Obo or, or Z or whoever, to, to get us free. And that, that goes for the opposite DT as well. So he'll be missed, but I know he's going to use that time to you know, get in even better shape and uh, you know, study the game and be around with us, you know, leading, leading high camp. It's looking to contend and, and try and get to the mountaintop. What's your view of uh, the, the road that lies ahead as far as the competition in this conference? With, you know, so many good teams, obviously. The dominance of Kansas City, Baltimore, we've got Cincinnati, Buffalo, just the Miami. There just seems to be so many roadblocks in front of you. But just what's your, what's your take on trying to not only – you know, stay on their level, but, but get past them. It's a, it's a slaughterhouse over in the AFC. But, you know, guys who come out of it are usually you know, the, the top dog in the NFL. So we look forward to it, especially in our division. And you know, we know that it's going to be it's going to be gritty, grimy. It's going to be tough. You know, every every AFC North game. So we we are excited every time we get to, to share the field with those guys, compete against those guys, and you know, those kind of matchups. You know. They don't. They don't you know, lie in the back of my mind. You know, we look. We, we look forward to those every single time. So, whether it's the, it's the Dolphins or it's the, it's the the Chiefs, it's the Bills, you know, Ravens, all all of them. You know, we, we look forward to those guys, and we look forward to, you know, making a statement every time we step on the field with uh, two great teams like that.